beneath the shadow of the pyramids. In the sweltering heat, we come from all around the world to gather for the premier marble sports event, the Marble League. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. As the teams begin to make their way into the stadium to raucous applause, I can't tell you how much the crowd has wanted this moment to be happening. But before you can compete in the Marble League, you must qualify. And that is exactly what we're here to do. We begin in this beautiful stadium. The torch, of course, not yet lit, but the fervor is as hot as ever. Thankfully, there's a fan up here as well. First, we have a new obstacle that brings us to our first event of this qualifier, the wave. You see in this demonstration, the goal is to get as far as you can onto this course without going into that catch basin in red at the far end. The more of your marbles that you get farther down the road than the others, the more points you get and potentially you could qualify. Up first, the Midnight Wisps and Team Momo, the latter of whom have replaced their captain. Momo Momo instead of Momo Mo. And ooh, we get two in the catch basin, but it's one apiece. And this is actually a closer battle than what we thought. Momo will move on. The whole rollers and the jungle jumpers. Ooh, jungle jumpers have lost one in the back. Both teams lose one in the catch basin. But look at those two rolling around for the rollers in the 10 spot. Yeah, that four really hurt the jungle jumpers. They lose by six in run two of 12. Primary and balls of chaos up next. As down they come, the waves too strong for several. This is an interesting strategic event that some of the marbles, they've kind of been scratching their heads on how to approach this. Do you want to sacrifice a back marble in order to give you the necessary push to get farther into the waves? Some teams are opting for that. Others have seen what happens exactly here. That push can sometimes be too strong and you end up dumping several for zero. Look at that, the hazers. Three zeros. That is not a good way to move along. Snowballs and gliding glaciers up now. Are they gonna keep together? They come together collision-wise midway down the course, not so much. It does not work at all for the snowballs. Just 10 points and that's it. Gliding glaciers perhaps recognized that they were getting a bit ahead of themselves in that other lane. So they slowed down, making sure they didn't get anywhere near the end. Thunderbolts and Mellow Yellow coming now. They're knotted together. That's a great view from a fan perspective on the opposite side. Oh, look at that. Four marbles in total in the 10 spot. Two for each team. It comes down to a two-point margin. And this is where we stand in Group A. So the positions will be based on total scores as we get into run 7 of 12. Now, you notice Group A, there is a Group B coming up later. As we reset here, and it's trouble for the Wisps. Two goose eggs on the board, and they lose by nine. Jungle Jumpers and the Rojo Rollers up now. Long hold in the gate. A lot of speed coming down, and it translates to four marbles in the red catch area. And we're tied, 19 apiece. Ties, that's okay, because head to head, you're not really looking for who's going to be the better of the two. You're looking for combined score at the end. Oh, and I think Marbles are getting eager right now. They want to better their score, so they're taking more chances. And that's why we're seeing far more end up past the 10 spot. 19-18 there. Hazers, the near, Oceanics to the far. Everybody really close together. No, not playing it safe at all. And three zeros are coming for the Oceanics. That puts them tentatively in sixth place. I figured that would actually be a bit worse. Gliding glaciers and the snowballs. Staying cool in the heat? No, not so much. Snowballs, though, they do place two in the 10. Dip. Those two back in nine. Where does it come out? 28 to 20. The gliding glaciers get on by. That's looking good for them. Final run of Group A in this first event. Mellow Yellow and the Thunderbolts. Mellow Yellow, three out in front. Are they going to be able to hold? They will. They've got three for nine points apiece. 
And that is good enough for 37 and good enough for first overall in the group. That is a wonderful result. Just getting by the Thunderbolts Rojo Rollers in third. Remember, top six teams qualify for the Marble League. Mellow Yellow fans, soak it up and celebrate. Might as well, even though we're not done yet. There's still a lot of events left to go. This beautiful stadium, by the way, the triple decker. You've got sky boxes, people hanging out in hot tubs. And you've got a pretty daunting run of funnels. Now, if you're new to the Marble League, of course, when it comes to these funnels, it is going to be physical, it's going to be fast, but the goal is not speed. It's to stay in the funnel the longest. So the first ones that you see dropping through down a level or two, that's not good. You want to stay far up top. Now, this is the same group of marbles that we had before. This is still Group A. We see the Thunderbolts leading by a full funnel almost as they drop in now. Nope, they still maintain that lead. Already two marbles down into the bottom tier. They get wider as you go along. The blue leading into the green. Those three black hole type funnels that take a long time to get through. Now we've had a change for the lead up top. Oh, now a three marble race there in the final orange funnel. Can't really tell from this angle who those might be, but you look down in the bottom right, just above that timer. There you can see where we shake out. Already one down into the green. Is that the Wisps, I believe? Have to get a better look of who that is. And now we've got the Rojo Rollers down there as well, and the Snowballs, and the Gliding Glaciers. They're bumping. Somebody's going to drop through first. Oh, my goodness. Tides have turned greatly for the Thunderbolts. They are now down with a cadre of marbles into that second-to-last funnel. We've surpassed one minute. A one-marble lead. Up top, oh, we've got a couple that drop straight on through. Several are down into the final. Actually, quite a few are down there. Who will it be? Is that Balls of Chaos? Oh, they're very close. A couple are looking through. Oceanics will drop through first. Then it's Waspy from the Midnight Wisps. Mellow Yellow, Balls of Chaos, Snowballs, Gliding Glaciers come through. There's the Rojo Rollers. This is a three marble race up top so far. Oh, and Jungle Jumpers are situating themselves well. This is going to be interesting. Look at that wide path. We've got another finisher from Momo. So going around. Oh, there we go. I thought that primary was going to be able to hold on. Foggy comes next for the Hazers, which means Leap from the Jungle Jumpers gets redemption. Of course, you remember, perhaps last year, Leap was actually the one that fell off of the funnels. Had a terrible fall. Ended up being okay, and I think... Leap was out for it this time. No heats on this one. Leap from the Jungle Jumpers collects 15 points. Foggy from the Hazers get 12. As we retally the score and move the board, the Hazers move into the top spot. Jungle Jumpers in second tied with the Thunderbolts. And it's a two-way tie between the Rojo Rollers and Mellow Yellow. Now as we move from trying to go slowly to going as quickly as you can, not individually, but as a team, we get ready for the relay race. This iteration, five meters with very little time to rest in between. Snowballs, Momo, Balls of Chaos, Hazers have the lead. Through the first handoff, it maintains the Hazers. Snowballs trying up top in the far lane. In the middle, big push from the anchor, and Momo clears the field by over a tenth. This is one of those events that, again, if you're new to the Marble League, it's not over until it's over. Primary, Gliding Glaciers, Rojo Rollers, Thunderbolts on the bottom. Thunderbolts getting surpassed by the Rojo Rollers in the third lane, and they hold on across the line to get the win. The time, though, 9.2 is a bit slower. Rojo Rollers go into second place. Midnight Wisps, Oceanics, Jungle Jumpers, and Mellow Yellow. Midnight Wisps hold the early lead, but now it's Mellow Yellow on the bottom lane. Wisps trying to fight back. It's going to be close, but Mellow Yellow is going to hold on. That time, provisionally nine flat. Also, oh no, they've adjusted it here. 8.591, and Mellow Yellow goes to the top. And that is all she wrote. Of course, only 12 teams in this group, so we have three heats of four. And Mellow Yellow captures 15 points. 
And they move from third up to first. Things looking dire for the Oceanics and Balls of Chaos as we move to the bread and butter. The Sand Rally. Lots of competitors made their way out of that beautiful stadium as there you see the starting order for these marbles. Eight captains in the field. Mellow Yellow, who have clinched their spot already, are opting to go with Yelly. The course laid out before them. Everybody starts in single file. And we're rolling. Fighting Glaciers out in front with the thunder Thunderbolts side by side. A bit of contact there sends the Thunderbolts to the top side, and that looks to be the faster way around. They take the lead. Balls of Chaos now slotting into third place, battling with Balls of Chaos. And Hazers, as I say that, they move up into second place. Hazers looking to get around the Gliding Glaciers. Mellow Yellow up there in fourth. They're running pretty well. They get up into third, trying to guarantee that they will be moving on. Slinging around these turns, the speed building very quickly along this course. Team Momo have a lot of catching up to do. Same thing with the Jungle Jumper. Team Primary also back there in 10th place. As now we get some jostling as this boulevard opens up and teams can draft on by. Their exit from that last turn making a big difference as we come through the split. Seven tenths of a second for the Gliding Glaciers. Good overtake there for second place. Hazers over the Thunderbolts. Now carving into the lead from the Gliding Glaciers and getting on by. Underneath the bridge. Over to the left, back to the right. In front of the stands, packed in the sand. Over the speed boost, Hazers take it. Top three all go to the bottom side. Here comes the Thunderbolts as they both go high off of that turn. That gives the Gliding Glaciers a better exit. They're bumping between them single file, one length apart. As they come down here and getting caught up on the wall. Oh my goodness, Gliding Glaciers have fallen back to third place. Primary, Midnight Wisps, Rojo Rollers, Jungle Jumpers recovered up to 7th place so far. Balls of Chaos have now fallen to dead last. Momo, off of that bottom spot. Thunderbolts to the inside across the speed boost, setting up for the right-hander. There's the finish line, and the Thunderbolts get the win. Gliding Glaciers, 2nd place. Hazers round out the podium. Balls of Chaos well off the back, 4 plus seconds adrift of the field. That was a quick end to that race, and Thunder, the captain of the Thunderbolts, brings it home over a second clear of Alpine. And so we tally up the final of the four. The Jungle Jumpers miss out on the transfer spot. Again, two points. Oceanics, oh look at that, they're down there. That is done. Perfect attendance in the Marble League is over. The Oceanics be watching from home. All right, now you've got a taste for what these groups are like as we get ready to start Group B. So the top six of that one have moved on. Twelve more teams getting ready to attack these four events to send them potentially to gold and Marble League glory. Raspberry Racers and the Limers. Lime Lime been upgraded now after Marbula won. They decided it might be good to have Lime Lime on the team, not as an alternate, but as a full team member. 36 points as we think back to how the first round went. That's a pretty good total. But the tears. And on that bottom side, dub three past the 10 spot, and that is not going to net them a very good performance at all. The Bumblebees easily move on, 25. Solar Flares and Team Galactic up now. One of the new teams. They get a quick start out of the gate, but then fall back. That may be the better way to do it, and it will be. Things were looking pretty good for Galactic, and then they just kept going for whatever reason. Solar Flares have a nice points haul. Pinkies and Indigo Stars. We go stars, needing to slow things up a bit. No, both teams have dropped one in the catch basin. Look at that, Indigo Stars net two nines. And it is enough, 25 to 24 to get by the Pinkies, but it's only good enough for fourth place overall. Cobalts and the Shining Swarm. Everybody neck and neck, sometimes going three wide. Oh, we only have one that heads off to the far end. 
And that one is going to make a big difference. Look at this, a two-point difference. 31, though, is not a bad total for the first round. Green Ducks and the Turtle Sliders. Oh, Sliders and the Ducks put one in. But look at the Green Ducks. That is almost perfection. A little celebratory dancing down in that final dip. Three tens. Unfortunately, that zero did hurt them. So after round one, the Limers hold the lead in front of the Solar Flares. Our top runners were going to go up again against the Raspberry Racers. Only one in the far end. Raspberry Racers, much better job this time around, putting two down in the far spot. And that gets them to provisional P1, a 36 net total from that round. Chocolatiers and the Bumblebees. Off they come, Bumblebees working together. And that didn't always work well, perhaps a bit too many collisions. But they still get two tens out of it. And look at that one way back in six for the Chocolatiers. What do the points totals work out to? 28 to 25, interesting. Closer than I thought. Solar Flares and Team Galactic, they know the number that they're chasing, those Solar Flares. Are they going to take it easy this time and make sure they don't dump too many in? Well, they get one past the point where they wanted them, but two for the other team, that has to help. Solar Flares, 27, ah, but it's only good enough for third. 10 of 12, Indigo Stars and the Pinkies in this fast-moving first event. Pinky staying to the inside here. Oh, and it worked to their detriment. They're going to have two zeros while two tens await the Indigo Stars. That's not enough to move them far up the order. Good enough just for sixth. The Shining Swarm and the Cobalts. Shining Swarm slower out of the gate. Is that going to work better for them? No, not exactly. One apiece in the zero spot. Oh, it's a one-point match. Cobalts lose the match, but are one spot higher in the order. As we come again, green and the blue. Oh, and the Turtle Sliders are going to put two down in the far end. Green Ducks couldn't match that 310 performance. Going to have two nines out of it compared to two eights. 28 points gets the Green Ducks in the top five at the end of this event. And so the Raspberry Racers capture the 15 points over the Limers and have the early lead here in Group B. Solar Flares in third. That's a good opening outing. It's a solid start. It's not pure Marble League competition. They're just the qualifiers, but still, that makes a bit of a difference. All right, here in Group B. Into the funnels we go. You have to wonder, is there a group of death? It seems like there always is in competitions like these, but based on you at home, what do you think? Which one is the worst of the two? Oh my, this is not going well at all for Pinky Winky. Or, actually, we've got another marble already down into the blues. That just shot on through so quickly, could barely even see it. Ducky from the Green Ducks was holding the lead, but I think that has gone the other way. Now it's a three-marble battle in the third funnel down the order. Oh, that switches back. Now we take a look and see where everybody is. Yeah, we've already got one into the last of the blue funnels. Then it's a four-marble race. Okay, five-marble race. Six now for that second funnel. Pinkies are still down there, but they are not going to drop into the green funnels first. I do not think that could be Royal from the Cobalts that is circling down there. Little sliders are also running back and forth between them. But what a job up top. Is that Raspberry Racers? Rezzy is doing a phenomenal job holding the lead. Look at the wide angle of attack. Not even tempting any contact. Oh, Turtle Sliders have now gone down. Tied for last, if you will. Remember, you're trying to stay on the absolute longest. Chocolatiers are dropping on through. Look at this. Raspberry Racers are still up there. Rezzy is going to enter that last blue funnel with just one other marble. And that might be Astron from Team Galactic. Oh, look at how slow it is in that middle green funnel right now. Pinkies have dropped on through. Now we've got two marbles joining them, three marbles as well. This is only going to get busier. We're going to need to take a look down here. This is better. Oh, Pinkies are in big danger. They get bumped to the side. That could change things. Oh, circling through. No, the Pinkies come in dead last. Cobalt's in second to last. 
Mocha drops on through. Look at Raspberry Racers up top there. Still holding that wide arc. They bump a couple of times, trying to keep it wide. Is it going to work for them? Oh, a big gaggle of marbles bounding back and forth between them in that final funnel. Oh, Raspberry Racers have dropped on through. Astron from Team Galactic is done, as is Bingo from Indigo Stars. Curling around here come the Bumblebees. And now it all comes down to these final two. The Raspberry Racers have held the lead throughout. Are they going to be able to keep it? Ducky from the Green Ducks trying to deny them. Oh, they do win it. Raspberry Racers, two in a row. The Green Ducks get second place. 2.33.37 37 is the time for Rezzy. What a job, winning by eight and a half seconds. Raspberry Racers stamping some authority right there. 30 points. It's still possible for them to lose the top spot, but it would take a miracle at this point. Remember, you just need to be in the top six. Whew. Let's see, can they make it three for three? You'd have to think, if they score well here and if they finish on top of the group. Based on those first two performances, well, maybe their favorites coming into this one? It's gonna be tough to tell. Shining Swarm is out in front in the relay race. Here come the Turtle Sliders right beside him. It's neck and neck across the line. Great view on the slow-mo. It is the Shining Swarm by 16 thousandths of a second. Then the Green Ducks, Raspberry Racers, Indigo Stars, Chocolatiers, and the Pinkies. The Pinkies fighting back. Chocolatiers fought back. Then it's in the middle lane. A wonderful recovery for both the Raspberry Racers and our winners, the Indigo Stars. But it's all about the times, remember. They're battling not necessarily between each other, but the clock. This is needs to pick up the pace a bit. Oh, a great anchor leg on the fourth lane. That's a wonderful view right there for the Limers. But it's only good enough for sixth place. That was a rather weak group overall. And look at this, Raspberry Racers again in the top three, but it's Indigo Stars and Shining Swarm picking up the top two spots. The Raspberry Racers clinched qualification with three medals. They cannot be knocked out. Of course, does that mean they're gonna take it easy in this marble rally? Oh, heck no. All but two of the racers in this event are team captains. The stakes are high and they know it. This is not a battle with Group A. It's not a multi-heat race. It is this marble rally that separates several teams from making it to the Marble League or going home and waiting another year. Down they come. A wonderful exit by who else? The Raspberry Racers. Ooh, that was a hard hit from, I think, Team Galactic, who had drafted by him only to hit that obstacle in the middle of the course. Chocolatiers are leading with Bonbon. Bon. Green Ducks coming in next. That's Mallard, the team captain. Cobalts, Solar Flare, Shining Swarm, Raspberry Racers, Pinkies, Team Galactic, Turtle Sliders, the Limers, Indigo Stars, and the Bumblebees. Well off the back, Turtle Sliders and the Bumblebees both get by the Raspberry Racers. The Tears holding on while they watch the Cobalt slot into second place. Pinkies now up into third. They were quick in the funnels, which was not a good thing. Can they turn that into some success here? That looked like some trouble farther up on that boulevard there, where a couple of marbles got shoved to the side. It's just under a one second lead for the Chocolatiers through the first checkpoint. Nice battle there between Pinkies, Cobalts, Green Ducks, all for second and third place. Big burst of speed here coming from the Pinkies. Chocolatiers, we're ready. Can they weather them again? Pinkies get by, but for how long? Chocolatiers aren't gonna wanna give that up early, but based on the speed, I'm not sure it's their choice. Team Galactic in third place. Turtle Sliders holding on to fourth. Galactic, Green Ducks, Solar Flares falling back to seventh. Raspberry Racers back in ninth. Slowing to a crawl. Turtle Sliders get by into second place. That was a team that was near dead last in the upper part of this course. What a recovery by the Turtle Sliders. They want to give it everything they've got to try to transfer or at least have a good showing. Oh, Pinkies hit off the wall. They get gobbled up by the teams behind him. It's a two-marble race. 
coming across the line. Photo finish. Oh my goodness, how did that end? Let's watch here. Pinkies. Contact across the line, and then it's a photo finish for second place. So Pinkies won the event, and it is officially by one hundredth of a second. Bon Bon from the Chocolatiers, the only non-captain in those several upper spots, getting the win. And there you have, oh, the Pinkies win the race, but don't qualify. Absolute heartbreak. The Thunderbolts and the Raspberry Racers are the best of the two groups. And as you see before you, officially, the teams that have qualified for the 2021 Marvel League. Where these qualifiers were an absolute marathon. Individual team, individual team. Back and forth they went, and as night begins to fall here in the land of the crazy cat's eyes, we hope that you will join us for the big one, the Marble League.